My name is Jeremy Kaplan. I am an assistant professor in the Communication Arts Department at CCBC. So I decided to pursue education. It's kind of a long and short story. The shortest version is that I, uh, you know, in college I wrote a lot and worked for my school paper. I was an editor in, in, high, in college and high school. And most of the education I had in grad school was actually not focused on print media at all and kind of honing those skills. It was more focused on academics and research. And through that research, I learned so much about the media industry that it really changed my um, kind of desire to become a journalist and more work in kind of media or media education. So then when I graduated, I did start writing for a few local publications in Boulder and throughout the Denver area. And I really was inspired while in college to want to get into kind of the more education side because I saw all my teachers and all of them seemed to love their jobs so much. And student journalism was something I was always interested in. So when I got out and I started writing and worked for a few local publications, I realized this was fun, but I really wanted to try to get involved in some sort of student media, student education uh, in higher ed. Well, one thing I'd like to improve upon as a professor, and this may sound uh, funny to uh, a bunch of students, but is actually being a little meaner because I feel as if um, I am just a very, I've been told at least throughout my life that I am a pretty overly nice guy and somewhat outgoing and I think sometimes that can be to a fault as a teacher because if you always want to be empathetic and help your students and um, you know uh, want to kind of accommodate them that can end up really hurting you. The hardest part of being an advisor is actually um, deciding when to and how much to edit. But a four-year school, there's a lot more responsibility on the students because you just have the upperclassmen, if you will. At the community college level, we don't really have that, right? And so every semester, we're basically starting over with a new staff, new writers, uh, and so it can be really difficult. The biggest challenge is to build the staff again every semester. But overall, it's still, to me, worth it because when I have students that see their work online and they really get a kick out of it and they really uh, show their parents, show their family, and you, know, they, you can view it from anywhere because it's on the web, uh, it really is rewarding in that way. So to write for the newspaper, one of my main things, a student that is maybe interested in journalism, writing for The Connection is going to give you the opportunity to, to practice your craft and to practice it in an environment where you have help, you have instruction, uh, you have help with drafts, and it allows you to really learn the process, if you need it, uh, of how an article can be improved upon. So, so it's the idea that you can, you can practice practice all of this before you go into the real world, also it allows you to get published. And in many ways, you could end up uh, having four or five articles published by the time you're finished uh, the semester, and that's in one semester. And so it can help you build a portfolio that not only the school will see, but it goes out into the world because it is online. And so it's just a really great uh, way to kind of uh, see how even freelancing can work because that's really what it's mimicking is, uh, is acting almost like a freelance writer uh, which is really where the trend in most uh, kind of print and online media is going. So the advice I would give to any student that wants to pursue journalism first of all would be to obviously take some introductory classes in the field to see if you really like it. Uh, that would generally be the first kind of uh, tidbit of advice. The other one would be to to practice the craft. You, you know, journal. I look at journalism very much like music, uh, cooking, writing. If you love, you know, anything like that, where you don't have to be paid to actually do it. 
So my interests outside of teaching, uh, I have lots of interests, I guess. Uh, I mean, I have uh, two kids, so they pretty much take most of my time. Um, in terms of personal life, I mean, I love cooking, I love music, uh, I love seeing live music, uh, you know, spending time outside with my family, you know, hiking, whatever, things like that. Uh, you know, in terms of professionally, besides teaching, I'd like to one day maybe start writing again. Uh, you know, I don't know when I'll ever have time for that or anything, but, uh, you know, I, I would like to do that. Um, you know, I don't know in exactly what capacity, but somehow. And, uh, you know, those are, those are the things that I really do enjoy mostly. Uh, you know, I, I would also, like I said, I, I love to cook. And so um, I have thought, you know, joking with some friends about also having like a food truck or something like that. I don't know that that would ever happen. But, uh, you know, th those are kind of some of my other interests. Uh, without a doubt, my favorite music would be reggae. There's too many reggae artists to name my favorite would be, but I would probably have to defer to older artists like uh, Dennis Brown or Garnet Silk and modern artists like um, Sizzla, Anthony B. It goes on and on. I mean, I couldn't pick just one. It's, it's hard. If I could interview anyone dead or alive, that's a really, that's almost like the reggae question. It's very hard to decide. Um, I mean, Bob Marley would certainly be a, a good interview, but if it could be any person, I mean, I'd almost feel like someone like Jesus would be a pretty interesting interview. Abraham, but, you know, I'm very interested in, um, you know, kind of like biblical histor historical stuff. Uh, I was raised very culturally Jewish, so I'm very interested in learning about a lot of that. So, so kind of biblical characters, I, I think, would be really, um, you know, if I had the choice of any person ever. But more modern day people certainly would be, obviously, like Bob Marley or uh, Jerry Garcia, because uh, those are two people people who passed away who I admire a lot. So that, those would probably be my two. Hmm. Something my students would probably be surprised to learn about me is that I do like 99% of the cooking in my house. And that, I, like I mentioned, I have two children, so there's a lot of food and cooking that needs to be done often. And I, I enjoy it most of the time. So that's probably one thing they wouldn't know, because usually as we progress through the classes, somehow it ends up coming out that I like music and things like that. Uh, and we talk a, a, a decent amount about food in class, because you can relate it sometimes to various subjects. But I think most people would probably be su you know, surprised about that. The best meal I can make. Oh. I tend to like any making any sort of braised meats. So, you know, like long slow cooked meats like, um, you know, short ribs or any sort of braised pork. I enjoy making mo most. Uh, you know, the best meal I probably made is something like for a special occasion, like a New Year's, like a, you know, standing rib roast or, or something more complicated like that. So if I, if I hadn't become a teacher, there's probably no question that my other job, my job would have been as a chef. So, I, and I actually thought about that heavily when I decided to go to college. My parents, I don't think, were sold on me going, you know, to a kind of a regular college for, just because of what I said before, that my high school grades were just so bad. But, um, I seriously thought about going to Johnson & Wales or CIA down, downtown. And I just kind of really thought long and hard about it. And the, you know, the culinary world is just, it's, it's really hard and really challenging on your body. Um, so, you know, working, you know, 12 hours a day on your feet in a hot kitchen kind of just didn't seem as attractive as possibly being a professor, although I didn't know that it was even, if it would happen. So I, I try to be very appreciative because, um, you know, these, these jobs can be very difficult to, to get at times. So um, I'm very thankful f for that. But I still love cooking and I hope one day to, to, to do it more.